Welcome to my studio. It's right here in the studio that I really do my best work. As much as I like going on location, when the subjects get really tough, it's for the studio that I really have to head. The reason for that is obvious if you're an experienced artist, um, and I'm sure that if you've been on location, you'll know what I mean when I say that you'll have quite a few problems. Take this painting here as an example. That looks quite tranquil, but I can assure you that the wind was whistling around my ears and it was by no means tranquil. Every time I put a board up of this size, it acts like a sail, and it's moving all the time, and it's very difficult to get the fine detail in. Any rag or piece of paper or anything like that that I have continually is flapping. The whole easel is trying to blow away on me. Add to that the fact that you're probably on a track somewhere and you're going to have people wanting you to move all the time. The tide is coming in and out. These waves are moving all the time. And if you have a close look at that, you'll notice that the shadows are very long. Us artists really do like to get those shadows. And of course, the best time of that is early in the morning or late at night. That's the very time when light's changing the most. So there we have another problem. On location, I must be very, very quick. If you have a look at that, you'll notice that the board is actually tinted. It's not the normal white board. The reason is obvious when you get started. White demands to be covered. White doesn't appear in nature very much. But warm colours like that tint is appearing all the time because sunlight is warm. So that colour, if it happens to show through the painting anywhere at all, is appropriate. It doesn't matter. But white it demands to be covered. This painting is an excellent example. Right through here, there is quite a lot of the underpainting still showing. The paint is on very thinly up through here, and the underpainting is showing through, all through the sky also, down through here, all over this area which is actually pebbles underwater. The underpainting is only just covered by a very thin layer of paint. If it was white, I would have to cover it. I have enough problems as it is. When I'm creating an illusion of a painting, I want to be free to be loose. If I have to cover the white as I'm doing it, it's just adding to my problems. Here we have titanium white. I also use zinc white quite often. Here we have lemon yellow, rowney orange, I often use cadmium orange also. That's cadmium red, alizarin crimson or carmine, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. That's often called the workhorse of the palette. Every artist that I know has yellow ochre and uses it heaps. Raw and burnt umber, hooker's green or viridian, chrome green, cerulean blue, and ultramarine blue. We have two blues, we have two very hot colours, two earth colours, two greens. The very deep blue is very good for bringing colour down in value on the cold spectrum. Alizarin and burnt sienna for bringing the colour down very dark in value on the hot side of the spectrum and of course the viridian or hookers when you're bringing a colour down in value in the green spectrum. Of course white is the basis for most of our colours and these are merely tints. For the purpose of this video we're going to go on location and do a quick oil sketch. We'll get the detail down, we'll make notes, take photographs and then we'll head back to the trusty old studio, get down the detail. Here we are at Boat Bay on the Manukau Harbour, Auckland, New Zealand. Gets its name Boat Bay from the fact that there are a lot of people out here with boats. You'll probably hear them in the background. Lots of kitties, dogs, all in sundry coming and going. It's a lovely day. It's a Saturday morning, lovely summer day. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the technique at this stage because we'll only double up on that when we do the studio portion. So I'll try and restrict myself to the particular 
problems we have on location. As you can see, I'm just locking in those atmospheric colours now, doing the reflection as I go. Finishing off with vertical brush strokes. More about that later in the studio. As you can see, I'm using plenty of medium. Put the reflection in as I go. Now this front bluff, it's leaping forward quite a bit, so I want those two colours to be distinct. So I mustn't play with it. Where those two wet colours touch, I'm going to just make sure I don't play with it. The rule of thumb with oils that you put all the darks on first, which is what I'm doing now. These colours are the atmospheric colours. Just block it all in and remove all the brush strokes there using fairly thin paint. By holding the palette up to the colour like that, you can often get a better idea as to just how you've matched that colour. This reflection under here is a slightly greener version. We'll just quickly block that in. This is a tricky bit. When you're on location, you really do have to make a decision what you're going to leave out. What you leave out is much more important than what you put in. And I think it's a bit like the cutting room floor in a, a good editor's office when he's making a great movie. What's left on the floor makes what he has to put in there a lot more important. It's much more important what you leave out sometimes. Just make sure that you don't overdo that. The decision you make now you're going to have to stick with. Put in too much and it just all shouts at you and it's overworked. Just writing myself quick notes. I've got a lot of adversities here on location. The wind's blowing things about. The board's moving all the time with the wind like a sail. Everything's going against me, all the natives crowding around and wanting to have a look, all the noises putting you off. So I just want to get it all down quickly. And because it's quick, it's going to be loose. Often these sketches turn out to be much better than the painting you do in the studio because they're nice and loose and free. I always finish them off actually, but for the purpose of this video, I'll not finish this one. The constraints of time. Holding the colour up and squinting at what you're looking at takes out the extraneous detail. Squint at the scene and you'll find that the major details will become more apparent and it helps you to make the decision as to what to leave out. Let's put that beach in sand and shadow there. Very effective painting tool, that the palette trowel. The colour goes on nice and cleanly. Make sure that it's not repetitive, boring, as it often happens when painting foliage. Sand going back into sunlight there. Now 
The sky reflected in the water is quite boring really. It can take up a lot of time so we'll just quickly whack it in there. Nice and thin so that the underpainting shows through. Just fluffing one colour up into the other like that. Makes it look more like a reflection, softening it all up. We'll put some waves in here soon. I'll cover the techniques involved here in the studio. Just writing myself some notes. Got to be very, very quick. Nothing too difficult about that. Yeah. One up into the other. Now for the little waves on the surface. Just brushing one colour out into the other. The blue into the green and the green into the blue. Simple. The glisten on the water from that low sun. Fairly early in the morning the sun was quite low on the horizon there. The light's disappearing fast actually. I want to get the shape of that headland, the way the sky is poking through those trees there. Once I've done that, I can just about leave it I think. As I say, I would normally finish that off. Once I've got the shape of that headland in there, it's enough notes for me to carry on later, I think. <laughs> 